This right here is the Miu Mini. It's yet another portable Chinese emulation device and it's kind of a follow-up of sorts to the BitBoy. You see how similar they look? Now, this little guy here is an interesting machine because it's both my favorite portable emulator at the moment and also the most frustrating. Though, that might not be your experience. What do I mean by that? Let's have a look. I'm actually very excited to review the Miu Mini because like I said in the beginning, this is quickly becoming my favorite portable emulation machine, at least at the moment. There's always a new one in the horizon. These guys don't sit still very long. I know that in a few months, there's probably gonna be a, a new and improved version of this. But right now, this is my favorite one. And you guys know I have a lot to choose from because over the years reviewing these little portable emulators I've had pretty much all that you can imagine and right now this is my go-to this is the one that I always carry with me and the main reason is the size this form factor here is hard to beat for me anyway I know some of you probably prefer something with a little bit more girth so it's easier to hold like the RG 351V here and this thing I love this thing too but this fits into all of my pockets this one, not so much. So which do you think I always have with me? That's right. So anyway, let's take a look at the body of the device here. I love this form factor. Uh, it's very similar, like I mentioned in the very beginning, to the BitBoy. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit heavier, but in a good way. The BitBoy always felt perhaps a little too light for my liking. If you played around with electronics as long as I have, you come to appreciate something that feels like there's more to it. You know, like this feels too plasticky, this feels right. I like this a lot. So it is meant to resemble, obviously, the original Game Boy, and it's kind of ironic that the screen is actually bigger. The D-pad is actually the exact same size. It's hard to show here, perhaps if I do it like this, exact same size. So it's a, it's a great D-pad, by the way. All the buttons here, I'm going to turn it off so I don't mess around with the interface, but all the buttons on the Miu Mini feel perfect. I don't know what kind of membrane they use for this, but the D-pad is solid, the buttons here are great. These buttons here, the start and select, which are angled in the same way as the original Game Boy and even use the same font. Overall, it's such a great reproduction of the original DMG. It's hard to look at this and not fall in love with it instantly. So you have the D-pad, you have a contextual menu button uh, and more on that later because I had to, remember how I said that this thing gave me a lot of hassle. I had to install a different OS on the system, which is not an unfamiliar experience with these little portable Chinese emulation devices. Most people that pick up an Embernic product, for instance, will say in forums that they don't like the stock interface, they went and installed custom firmware and things like that. For my taste, a lot of these devices have come a long way and they're very usable out of the box. Me, however, I had a kind of weird experience where I was having a lot of issues here that don't appear to be reported by anybody else. So some games were crashing when I try to save them and things like that. The experience was a little bit odd, but again, I was the only one that I could find having these issues. So on one hand, it was frustrating because I couldn't find a fix, but on the other hand, it makes me think that my unit just happened to be configured wrong somehow, and I fixed those issues by installing custom firmware. I'm gonna include the link in the description if you happen to buy one and you end up having the same kind of issues as I did. In my case, I would recommend installing custom firmware. We're back to the form factor here, so I went over the buttons, the D-pad, the menu button here that doesn't function the exact same way as it did on stock OS. I'll show that uh, in a minute. On the back here, you have two sets of shoulder buttons, and I love that they're slightly offset as if you can see it's hard to show here on camera but the l2 and r2 are ever so slightly raised it gives you that sense of tactile feedback where you know exactly where your fingertips are because of this little ledge here right so you know as you're transitioning from r to r2 here you know exactly where your finger is there's no way you can mistake these nice little touch it's present in the 351v as you can see here it's a little bit more pronounced the 351V is going to be a constant point of comparison because I, I actually love this device. I, I love it. And I love the fact that the Miu Mini offers very similar experience and performance in a smaller package that actually looks more like the original Game Boy. But anyway, on the side here, you have a dedicated volume wheel. I like that. Often these devices don't have that and you have to rely on shortcuts to increase, say, brightness and volume. So I like the fact that this is a dedicated volume button. So let's turn on the device here. You see that 
gorgeous 2.8 inch IPS panel. Offers great viewing angles, not a lot of color distortions or anything like that. On camera here, you see how it, the screen seems to undulate. This is an artifact caused by the shutter speed on my camera. In real life, I'm looking at it dead on and I've been playing with this thing for a week now. There's no such effect, that's just on camera. So this is a custom interface. That's not what you're going to be greeted by when you open uh, your Mi right out of the box. It's not too dissimilar, there's a few differences. There's a few options, for instance, this custom job here uh, you can adjust the color uh, on the screen so if it's not quite to your liking you can mess around with the hue or the saturation right so that is not present on oh no I didn't want to change anything okay so that's not present on stock OS not that I want to mess around with that so you have some you know usual uh, settings there your language key maps the background music volume and stuff like that so let's take a look at the other interface again so you have the recent tab so all the games that I most recently played are gonna show up there you have your favorites right now I only have these four here I just ran into one of the first issues I had with this machine and it's not so much an issue with the machine itself it's an issue of with the way they prepared the SD card. As you know, these devices often come preloaded with a bunch of games. Sometimes, like it's the case with most Embernic products, the ROMs are properly named and everything. Not so much with this one here. So as you can see here, one of my favorite games, it says Hamburg Time, and that's obviously Burger Time Deluxe, one of my absolute favorite Game Boy games of all time. So they both named it wrong, and they also put some numbers here in front that are seemingly at random, which makes navigation of games a little bit tricky. It's not that big of an issue because you can always delete those ROMs and load on your own. You gotta remember though, and this is something that it's a weird quirk that I don't really appreciate, but every time you put on new ROMs, you have to press this menu button here in the middle and then hit refresh ROMs so that the system will load them for you. That I thought was very weird. Usually the OS on these machines will just scrub the SD automatically and search for new files. Not so much with the MiU Mini. It's a little bit annoying, but not a deal breaker. So let's take a look at the games this thing emulates. So you have the Atari 26 600, the Atari uh, 7800, you got FBA for uh, some arcade games, you got Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, which is always a favorite system of mine to emulate on these machines, Game Boy Color, the Game Gear, the Atari Lynx, you got MAM for arcade, you got the Sega Genesis, which is shortened to MD, as you know that's the international name of the Sega Genesis, the Mega Drive, you got the Master System, which is like Sega's NES basically it wasn't super popular here in North America from what I can gather back home in Brazil the master system was all the rage you got the Neo Geo you got the NES the Neo Geo Pocket the PC Engine PlayStation which it runs really well surprisingly well for a machine of this size Super Nintendo and Wonder Swan Color so like I was mentioning, my favorite system to emulate on these machines is the Game Boy Advance. There's just so many great games on it, and this form factor is just flat out perfect for GB8. Though I know that some purists would prefer some kind of landscape setup, like this uh, RG351MP that I got here. This thing is metal and it's big and bulky and heavy. I Again, I do like that extra weight, but this is perhaps a, a tad more than I'm willing to put up with. And as you can see, I mean, the whole game fits almost on the screen of the RG351 MP. So if you're going for portability, it's hard to recommend something other than the Mio Mini. But anyway, let's load here some GB games. I like the fact that the OS directs you immediately to the last game you're playing, in this case, Fire Red, which I also have marked as my favorite. To put a game as a favorite, all you have to do is select it, like here, let's say Prince of Persia, hit the menu button, and then there's add to favorite. So once you do that, it's gonna show up here on your favorites uh, tab, and there it is, Prince of Persia. So let's go back to games, back to GBA, and again, it selects the last game that I was uh, that, that I had selected, which is nice, I like that. It's a nice little detail. Uh, so I'm gonna load up here my save in uh, Pokemon Fire Red. Now, which is what is interesting is that <laughs> for a second it flashed the last game that I was playing on the screen. That's again a little quirk of the OS. Not fully baked, I think. There's still some kinks to work out. Um, but it works really well. So here it is, it automatically loaded my last save, and off I go. Now, one thing that's great on this custom firmware here, it's something that's not included in the uh, stock OS, is fast forward. Some of these RPGs are really grindy, so to get over the slow parts 
uh, a little bit faster, you can hit the menu button, which again, with the stock OS, you'd see a menu show up here with the options to save a state or to exit the ROM. Not so much anymore that disabled that functionality. So now this button here, if you hold it and press R1, now I activated fast forward. So now I can get past some parts that are a bit of a slog in games like this. Right? Pokemon is pretty grindy, right? So like I'm trying to, there we go. So it becomes instantly much, much faster. And every time I turn this off, I'm amazed by the fact that we used to play Pokemon like this, just stock, like even running, right? Like I have the shoes already, but this is pretty slow. I'm not sure if it's the ADHD talking here, but for the most part, I play Pokemon like this. So to exit, it used to be before the uh, custom OS that I installed, you press this button right here and then you exit on the menu. Now that button doesn't work anymore for this. To access the menu now, what you do is start and select. So that's the Retro Arch menu. So I can just go here and close content and then quit Retro Arch. Although you don't actually have to do it like that. Another thing that's interesting on this uh, custom OS, because I can't recall if this was uh, turned on on the stock OS. You can press and hold this button here and instead of turning it off immediately, it's going to first exit to the menu. I like that. And then you can just press to sleep, press again to wake up. I also like how quick that is. See, I'm right back into the game and I can just press and it's asleep. I click again and it's back on. Compare that to the RG351V, which again, I love, right? But a little bit slower on the on the draw there and then I always have to press it twice for it to go back to sleep and sometimes you see how long that took look at that look at that off on off on it's little things like that that make me prefer the Mio Mini as my dedicated daily driver for emulation I, I really love this thing so again back to the main menu Press and hold a little bit, and there we go. And if you continue to do that, it's gonna turn off the machine. So, um, let's see here. Uh, I love that it emulates PS1. So I'm gonna load here PS1. It's, again, selecting the last game I was playing, which is Warcraft 2. This EA port, by the way, is really great for all the bad things we say about EA. It's good to sometimes play a game like this and remember that they used to do actually a pretty decent job. So, let's boot up Warcraft 2. I gotta say, Playing these classic RTSs on a little portable device with such a vibrant screen like this is just priceless to me. I just love it. So I'm gonna load my save game right there. And there we go. So I'm gonna turn on the volume here. And that's Warcraft freaking 2 on a portable machine. Look at that, dude. Oh my god. For those who don't know, there's a bunch of real-time strategy games that were ported to the PS1 back in the day. So if you're a, a real-time strategy fan, this is a great way to re-experience those games. Some of these ports are better than others. Uh, Command & Conquer Red Alert is pretty decent. Warcraft 2 is also pretty decent, considering, you know, it was made by EA. I just love this thing. Look at this. And I'm not sure if I mentioned already, but there seems to be like an undulating effect happening on the screen here. That's an artifact caused by the shutter speed on my camera. In real life, you don't see that whatsoever. The screen is as close to perfect as it gets. It has great viewing angles. It is a bit glossy, as you can see, so it will attract fingerprints. That doesn't happen to the body of the device itself. It has this matte finish that is really nice, really nice. So let me select this. The guy finished my farm. Let's go there. It's gonna be, I'm gonna be playing very awkwardly because I'm showing the camera to the screen, right? So it, it never works so well when you're doing it like that. But, uh, oh shoot, here comes the computer. He's gonna kick my ass, isn't he? Yeah. The computer doesn't mess around in this game. Anyway, so that's that's Warcraft 2. Let's press the button there. Okay, here we go. Let's exit here. But yeah, this is the Miu Mini. It is my daily driver for emulation at the moment. I love how small it is. I love the buttons. They're really high quality. I like that the sleep function works immediately just like a phone. Again, I was used to this. See? You see the difference? So, <laughs> look at that. For something like that, where the idea is to be able to pull it out of your pocket, play a little bit, then put it back in your pocket, this is nice. I did run into some problems with the stock OS. I had to tinker with it a little more than I usually do with these devices. But for the resulting experience, I'm going to say 
well worth it. As always, links to buy your Miu Mini are going to be in the description below. I do understand this thing is hard to come by right now. On the forums, on the subreddits, people are saying that most stores are in back order because they're really sought after. This thing goes for 50 bucks at the moment of shooting this video. 50 bucks for 50 bucks, this is a killer experience. If they manage to get that stock OS working better, even better, right? It would be a bonus, but as is, it's a great little device, especially when you factor in the fact that the experience I had, the little issues with the save states getting corrupted and things like that, I couldn't find other people having the same issue. In fact, I actually got downvoted on the subreddit when I mentioned the problems I was having. I guess people took my frustration as just me being a hater of the device. Not the case, I actually love this thing. If you have any questions, I'm gonna be answering them in the comments down below. If you don't already, Follow me on social media. I'm very active on both Twitter and Instagram. I post a little behind the scenes whenever I shoot these videos there. If you're into stuff like that, maybe you'll enjoy it. But that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done.